Hello Grinder School. This is Code Red Rules coming to you live. And today we're going to be doing something different. And instead of a no limit recording, we will be doing four tables of 50 cent dollar limit hold'em. Now, not very many people probably on Grinder School play limit hold'em, but there was a request for such a video and I used to be a limit hold'em pro before I switched to no limit and so I I think I'm pretty qualified to make this video. And before I start, I'm going to go ahead and preface my video with a couple ideas or ways if you if you're not being able to beat this game right now, there are two things that you can use that will almost instantaneously make you a winning player because I know that's what that's what I did to do that's what I did in order to become a winning player. The first was buying buying and reading small stakes hold'em. Now, it doesn't really sound all that much fun, you know, buy a book, read the book, make money. But that's exactly what it's exactly what it is. Go ahead and check the two and we'll raise the ace eight suit in. C bet. I mean, you have to call the raise because we're getting enough odds regardless of what we do. So we go ahead and check. And the great thing about Limit Hold'em is you really don't have to keep rebuying also. You only need about 12 big blinds or so in order to continue. We'll fold the 9-5. So we haven't, so we're not starting off too well here, but we'll, we'll get the hang of it. So the first thing I want you guys to do, if you guys haven't done, done so and you guys want to play Limit Hold'em, is go ahead and read... And we're going to re-raise the nines. Re buy and read small stakes limit hold'em, and follow their hand chart that is that it is inside their book. Fold the seven ten suited. This is an interesting scenario here. Do we want to take the free card? And I think we do at this point, and we'll go ahead and call most river bets. We could value bet this here. We might get a call out of an eight. No, you had king queen. When we make that re-raise preflop, it's because our nines is it's mainly for value and because we're in position on him, and he's going to be missing the flop a good two out of three times. So it's pretty much easy money. And when he does miss the flop, he's going to be calling us on the flop bet 100% of the time too because he's going to get odds. So I only checked behind that turn there, mainly because we don't really we'd have to fold if we get raised. And value betting the river there is is uh, pretty thin. I really don't expect him to have the king all too much. I expect him he'll he'll call us with a lot a lot weaker hands there as well. So again, not starting off too well here, but we'll, we'll be all right just until we get some hands on these guys. And also, want to get into is I wrote a limit hold'em guide way back when, and this is going to be a fold in late position on, on a flop turn river. And to get there, you guys go ahead and go to the poker strategy section. And I'm way down here. Where am I? Here I am. Let me click and hold them. Poker guide. And all these different tabs here are different scenarios. Or I'm sorry, different. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and re-raise the tens as well for value. And we get four bet here, so his four bet range is approximately. I would say jacks are better than ace king. Now, given that we won't be able to fold here until um, a little bit later in the hand, he's gonna be pretty much instant betting into us. And we're going to be calling him down. He's not really afraid of the flush. I'm a little bit of uh, I'm debating whether or not to call this river. I think because of the fact we're getting like eight and a half to one on a call, we have to make the call. But we actually see jacks through aces here a lot. Yeah. So we're not starting off too well, but you know, given his range preflop of his ace king and whatnot, then we pretty much have to go ahead and and 
play it the way we did. And we're going to continue re-raising the ace-queen suited again because we don't cold call pre-flop and limit hold them at all. And you're going to go through little swings like this because that's just the way the game is. And again, he four bet us, but give me any four bet us last time. I'm not really getting him too much credit this time either. And now that we have the flush draw, we're going to continue to call because we're stations. And this is Lemon Hold'em. And now we can go ahead and safely fold, and we're going to be behind a pretty wide percentage of the time. The only reason why I would ever call here with Ace High is if I see him betting all three streets with a with a, not a very... Wow, you don't get very much time bank here, do we? Yeah, see, I've seen him just flat with 7-8 suited, so we're doing all right here. We also have him as a 40-30, too, so, I mean, that's another reason why to go ahead and re-raise him pre-flop with the ace-queen suited. It's more like for value, and the fact that he had aces the one time and then back-to-back hands, it's tough, but... As long as we play correctly, we'll go ahead and get there. So another thing that I want to uh, show you guys is the preflop chart. Or forehanded out of position. I don't like a C-bet in this case. Probably go ahead and check call one bet because we're getting 11 to 1 on our on our call. And now that we have the back, now that we have the flush draw to go with it. We'll most we'll definitely have odds to call any bet here because we're only five to one to hit and we're getting seven to one on our draw. So and now we can go ahead and probably check fold just fine. We're gonna go ahead and rebuy. So and I'm trying to think. We'll go ahead and fold the A6 suited, and we can go ahead and fold here, too. I don't know what he would be calling that flop bet with, and then not having gotten there on the Turner River, so. So far, we've missed a lot of good draw situations. Okay, so I'm going to show you this preflop chart, which I just found online, and all I did was a Google search of Limit hold them odds chart, which doesn't really take too much here. And this is a small six hold them tight odds chart, and you can see that aces through kings is always a re raise. Uh, facing a raise, so is tens and jacks from any position. And then, as you can see, a late position raise. We'll have to get back into that ninth hand here. We'll go ahead and call the jack ace ten suited and fold the ace four suited. We have the flush draw, so we're gonna go ahead and lead out because we're first to act, and we'll probably end up firing three barrels as long as it's more than heads up. Or, I'm sorry, as long as it's heads up. But now we're betting the ace for value, and we're betting the river two for value. He goes ahead and raises us on this turn. This is an interesting scenario. We can't fold ever on this turn, definitely, and not even on the river either since we get the ace. He's going to be checked behind here a lot, so I'm just going to go ahead and bet. The flush draw is really scary against some players, and I don't know what he would be raising the turn with, but then folding to one bet on the river. It's usually a pretty bad play, unless it was a complete bluff, which it's possible that it was a bluff, but... Chances are that he wouldn't be betting the river himself. So we get some money back. We have a pretty crazy image right now on this table, so this is going to be fun. As you can see here, we can go ahead and check our hand chart out. Pocket nines, late position. It really doesn't make too much. I'll go ahead and raise the button, blind steal a 10 queen. I really don't like using the hand chart 100%. I, I do like, to, if you're just starting out, I like to use it, but I really don't like 
using these charts where they have little like grids because I think it's too cut and dry and it's not as how would you say I'm having a tough time coming up with the word it's not specific, scenario specific enough like me oh and by the way don't cold call guys and lemon this is an easy fold like I'd much rather for, prefer to use the like the hand chart that says actually in the book Trying to, I'm trying to look right now. I actually have small stakes holding in front of me, and I'm trying to use that because they do a better job explaining. And what not, what to do? Because they really don't have. The problem with this, with these preflop ranges, is that they don't go into detail enough about where the original preflop raiser was when you re-raised him. And another thing I'm going to show you guys... Okay, there's there's two charts in the book. For one, there's a tight chart and a loose chart. Even though you might think you guys are playing in a loose game, say, you know, 5 cent, 10 cents, or anywhere around there, it's almost always correct to go ahead and learn the tight chart first, and then go ahead and adjust to the loose chart when you have decided on when and what to do. I'm sorry, on when and what tables. And the tight chart is when three to five players uh, are ab on average to see the flop, and then the loose chart is between six and eight. So it's not very often that you get to see a lot of three to five, but if you ever see somebody with six players in the, in the pot, then you can go ahead and, and use the loose chart's calling standards. Now, it might be kind of confusing, but after a while, you kind of get the hang of it, and that's pretty much how I... Got a original, got my grasp at Lemon Hold'em at 25 cent, 50 cent level way back in the day at Stars, where the games are a little bit tighter than other, than other places. So I used a tight chart, and when it ever went up, see right here, 3 4 suited, this is going to be an interesting scenario because we're getting 8 to 1 with our suited connector. And so we can play many suited cards, as apparently to what. We have to assume these guys are going to be calling too. So when you do that, you're getting 8 to 1, 9 to 1, 10 to 1 on your call. And now that we have a gut shot and a pair, we're going to be in a pretty sticky situation right now. I was hoping, you know, a pair and a flush draw is what you really want to hope for, or even a flush draw. But we have to call, okay, now now we can actually fold it pretty good. If we had the, the 8 here, if we had like four eight suited, then we then we should still call and I'm going to a little bit, getting seven to one, eight to like seven and a half to one. Because of the fact is that on a gut shot, you need you have four outs to continue, which means you need ten and a, ten and a half to one pot odds in order to make the call. I'm using that from this little odds chart that I have right now, ten and a half to one, four outs, and that's not including any implied odds. And the implied odds are assuming the fact that if you hit your gut shot, you're going to have uh, two streets of value, turn and river. Now, it's generally the case when you have a two card to the flush draw and not, we're going to re-raise the sevens, two cards to the flush, two, car, two cards to the straight draw and not one. One to the straight doesn't really do too much. Uh, uh, we'll bet once here, although we don't assume... Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be pretty much behind now. We're gonna go ahead and four bet the ace king, and we're getting twelve to one. If we had our seven, we might be able to get. Actually, I think this is a good fold, and we're not gonna be able to fold ace king against this guy because there's just too much equity. We still, you know, we still have a gut shot and two over cards, so we're not really gonna fold, especially in a four bet pot. So. Yeah, he rivered, or he turned himself a, he just, he had ace-king. He turned himself the set, and the reason why I bet that, I bet that river there instead of check calling is for one of the reasons why I explained to my guide, and that is a check call, check call river bet line. When you hit a hand like ace-king, 
and you, and you river your your pair, you want to make sh you want to make it seem like you're going to be getting your money in with the best hand. And given the fact is that he's calling us, or what's he three betting us that were prefab? Probably ace queen. And probably tens are better prefop. So let me see here. Ace queen tens are better, and he's raising us on that flop with probably a pretty wide range of holdings himself. We're gonna go ahead and fold to six four. And the reason why I, and the reason why I folded the sevens down here to his raise is because of the fact that we weren't really getting implied odds, implied odds or implied odds, even though we're getting twelve to one to call. We need like twenty two to one, and even with the two traits of value on the turn and river that we would get times two, which would be four, we would only be getting a max sixteen to one odds and not twenty two to one. I like the re raise there with the seventh because again, he's gonna be missing the flop most of the time. It hasn't worked yet in this case. Oh, and the reason why, okay, again, reason why I like to, to bet the river here instead of check calling is because the fact is he's going to be checking, if we, if we, if we are now ahead with the ace king, we're going to be, he's going to be checking behind a lot of rivers that we are ahead on. And we're going to be bet three betting this if he decides to check raise. I'm going to go ahead and take the free card right now. We, and we'll be able to blind see with the A7 pretty easily. We're going to take the free card. We have yet to hit one draw. And I'll we'll take the free showdown too. So we were ahead anyway. Okay, now we went ahead and got check raised. We have a gut shot. And he could, he could have a pretty wide range here between a flush draw and a straight draw, even a small pair. So we're going to go ahead and take a free card given to us. And we hit our 7, so that's good. And we'll go ahead and raise. We're only behind 7-9, so. And he had pocket queens. We're going to have to fold sixes here preflop. In order to, to cold call for set odds, you need 5-1 to one preflop odds to call. There's a lot of concepts to go over here real quick, and it's really hard to do that playing so many tables as well. So I, I really would rather see him re-raise preflop with his queens because that's where you get a lot of your value at in some of those hands like jacks and queens is the re-raise preflop and and not post-flop, especially on the flop or so. So you got to make sure you do cash in on those on those hands preflop. I can go into detail a little more on the check call check call river bet line. Which is in my guide, and I believe it is in the the three six limit game section. I outlined a few of the select plays in order to maximize your EV and whether or not you should be check calling or, or betting that river. And these all went through back in the day when I was talking with F Nor. Now we can go ahead. We're going to be betting the nine seven. Check the poker odds chart for whether or not to raise. King Queen suited under the gun in a seven hand game, and it should be a pretty easy one. And we're gonna go ahead and bet keep betting. Using calls with the ace. We're gonna get value. Seven hand game, I like to to raise the King Queen suited under the gun. The full ring game you have a little bit more to talk about, but we can value town three streets now with our king with their top pair good kicker. I'm I'm really not a big fan of the uh, open limp, and I'm debating whether or not I should actually blind seal with my queen nine offsuit. I'm debating not. Oh, we get pocket kings. That's always good. And we'll go ahead and overlump the fours. We raise the kings for value. No need to slow play. 
He's got he's got to call one bet anyway. We get four bet, so that's good. The ace is hit, but we still really can't fold. And we'll probably end up just going showdown with our hand kings. Because he could be making the play with jacks or queens here, too. And playing them pretty bad. Given that we have no read on him. We run into aces, so that's always fun. Good thing, good thing the ace did come. <laughs> Otherwise, we could have lost a lot more money on that. Now, if you had a read on a player that he was specifically tight, like really, really tight, then you can maybe fold the river. But I'm really not a big fan of really barely... In an 11 hold them game, I rarely ever fold kings or aces. Well, aces is specifically. Unless eventually heads up, I never really fold aces. And I probably never even fold kings heads up. So, Because the chances of him four betting there out of position and then having the ace hit... I mean, and then betting all the way. How how, how, how is he going to play queens? You know, he's got to play queens the exact same way. You know, he might not put a river bet out there with queens, but it's tough. I'm gonna go ahead and find a new table. Buy-ins. I usually buy in for twenty-five big blinds or so at a time. This game can get swingy, but uh, and it looks like our 40-30 guy is now down to 18-7, so that's always something else to go ahead and keep in mind, too. In order to... Usually what I did to beat these games is you find... As you move up, you know, you follow your specific hand chart, and you'll be able to... And we have to pretty much call any raise here, too, because we're getting sick odds. You'll, you'll end up finding who else is playing by the same hand chart by, the, by their raise... But they're calling range like this 1510 guy is playing the exact same like pretty much playing the exact same hand chart that we are and so you're actually able to do a little moves on him because whether or not to call you'll be able to like fire the third barrel on him if he's going to be folding top pair so and, and the sit okay the thing about the limit hold'em games is that it's always almost incorrect to fold a decent hand. Um, I think I went into a little bit here. Uh, one of them says when not to fold on one of them. I'm going to go ahead and try and find it here and show you guys. Because I think folding is... Yeah, okay, so you're... Three three other moves that I that I that I detailed as we were gonna insta fold the ten eight suit in. You have the check raise on the flop to protect your hand, the raise for the free card, and then learning when to not fold. One of them, you know, is when to draw with for a gut shot. Raising your draws. I mean there's a lot of a lot of nuanced plays here that I developed over my many my my many thousands many hundred thousands of hands that I did play ten five yeah we'll re raise these game this is an interesting scenario no one has raised yet with the king queen suited and what should we do we are under the gun we are in middle position king queen suited they said just go ahead and call so we go ahead and call and that's a nice little flop for ace king you go to value, or we're not going to be missing any of it. If he goes as and check raises us here, we're probably going to go ahead and just flat call. But we're going to try and get more streets of value out of him. And he, he played that alright, although I don't really care for his lead on the flop. We're going to go ahead and call King Jack Sudan on the gun. Demanding whether or not we can, if we hit our, if we hit our queen or jack, it's going to be any good. And truthfully, I think the chances are of us of actually hitting it, we're going to be dominated a lot. So there's really heavy, heavy reverse implied odds. Now, okay, here's we got we got a flush draw, two overcards on the flop. This is a perfect scenario where you want to raise your draws. And I say that is because we got more people acting, 
in front of us that have already played than have acted behind us. If we were only one guy behind, if there were like three guys behind us, I wouldn't want to race here. I would just try and suck people in. And now we're going to have to hit our spade to go any farther. And we miss our like fifth draw, which sucks because we're running bad. But See, look at the kind of value we're getting out of there. We got value from two guys here with gut shots and a pair. So if we had our jack, it was good. So we had a jack and the flush draw. So we raised that for value on that flop. Because we're three-handed, pretty much going to be building the pot. We can go ahead and uh, the fact of the matter is we also got a free card there a lot, too. If we don't hit our flush, I'm sorry, if we don't hit that four, so the guy doesn't hit a gut shot or whatever on that turn, then we get a free card there as well. So we not only do we raise for value on the flop, but we also get a free card three-way. We'll go ahead and raise the ace, Blimer's blind for value. Okay, so we're. I'm going to go ahead and run through this and poker stove here, and I'll go ahead and show you the equities on this flop. King, Jack of Spades. By the way, guys, it's like almost uh, never correct to fold preflop after putting in one small bet and it's one small bet back to you. Unless you're in the blinds. And even then, you can make an argument for calling. Blind play is really huge in Lemon Hold'em and how to make yourself profitable and whatnot. Cards. Alright, he had Ace King. The other guy had Ace Four. I don't think the suits really matter. Like right here, we should be calling. We're getting like 6 to 1 on our call, but we have a suit to connect. That's a pretty good call. Now we have a gutter, which may or may not be correct, which may or may not be good. If we hit, which is so we have to fold now to the raise, which is just fine by us. Pull on 10 9. He didn't have the ace of spades, so that does count out against us. And then we had. Check out our equity on this board right here. We have 40% equity three-way on this board. So therefore, every single bet that we get from from those two players, when we have this much equity, we we have just made like 8% of our money. Because we are... Because we're getting 3 to 1, right? Because we're putting in 1 in order to get there 2. So net 2 to 1 is 33.5%. So we made six percent on our on our on every bet that we make when we bet that every bet that goes in on that flop we get six we get an extra six percent on so that's like free money for us so we raise for value and if we don't hit the turn we usually check behind so we get two cards for that one bet and yes there was a player to act behind us but like I was saying before there's two people that have already acted and there's two people that are able to put money in the pot. There's only one guy behind. Our net on that, these two guys are going to have to call raise. Because it's generally almost incorrect to bet, call, to bet fold on that board, on that board, whatever the hand they had, because they don't really know. There's really no point in order to bet and then fold, because they're beginning odds, especially with their gut shots that they had. So, we raise the kings for value. Ace magnet. Uh, we could bet, but I'm not going to. I'd rather do this and then try to induce a bluff out of the guy. Pocket threes, we'll go ahead and the blinds with. This is an interesting spot for value. I don't think he'll call me with an eight here. He might call me with tens, but this is close. This is like one of those thin value spots, so I'm going to go ahead and check. If I had a little better read on him, that he would that he's that he's going to call me 
with a wider range, and we're going to go ahead and call the threes. I mean, you have to pretty much fold to his flop bet. Huh, he checks in the ace. Interesting. I think I'm still going to fold. I was getting like six to one there on the on the on the ads to call the re-raise for the set value, so that's a good spot that I could raise raise and call. Uh, the reason why I'm debating whether or not I missed a bet here with those ten uh, against his tens is that I'm debating whether or not he actually calls. He might have called river bet with tens. I'm just trying to think of what hands that he has in his range pre-flop that are going to call me, and it doesn't usually have an eight in it. <laughs> so we can go ahead and. We're going to open fold the fours. Yeah, I want to open fold the fours. What I'm, what I'm checking is on the, is the preflop hand chart that I've showed you guys. Just so I can teach what I'm... So I can follow what I'm teaching, too. I like to multi-table limit hold them. I think at, at one point I did eight table the thirty sixty games, and up until then I never really eight tabled at all. Although there's a lot of people that do, I really base my play a lot on the reads and whatnot. And I, f although you don't think that there's a possibility, like you really can bet people off of hands. Although you need to have a specific read on them that they that they will fold. Like trying to bet this 78-11 off a of hand is not good, but maybe trying to bet a a 14-8 if you can if you can and if you can correctly assume whatever his range is, and then you can think about what you'll go what you'll do with that range because you're thinking that your stats are going to be fairly similar. Although I don't know what stats I'm running right now. This is going to be a fold. Like I said, cold calling 11 hold him is bad. There's really only three specific hands that I like cold calling on, and that's ace jack suited, king queen suited, and pocket nines. And I think everything above that deserves a re raise. Now, I will cold call for set odds. That's something a little bit different, but you need five, you need a five to one odds pre flop in order to do that. So that's like a raise, or I'll limp a few limps and a raise that you're going to assume that your other players are going to call behind you. So. It looks like a lot of these guys aren't actually raising too much pre-flop. Like this guy here, 19-3, 12-22-4. And the thing is, too, you got to make sure you maximize your value post-flop on your hands. Like when I raise my king-jack suited, if I was second to act, I wouldn't raise because there's two people to act behind me. And I want, well, I want those two players to call. I don't want to get heads up. Because heads up, I don't have as much equity against the players. Jack ten this is gonna be an interesting scenario. I don't think I should even call it, even though he's in a a, a loose opener against a raise. Jack ten as a fold. Yeah. Go ahead and raise the ace queen suited for value. Look at that. A lot of our value in these hands comes from preflop. And the fact that when we when we do hit, they're not going to be paying us off as lightly. If he raises us here, I'll probably go in check call mode. And I'm going to keep trying to go for value. Bet, bet, bet. I have to put somebody specifically on, a, on an ace jack right now in order to fold anything, but... Yeah, I'm still going to be betting. I'm not really afraid of anything. And if he raises me, it's going to suck, but what are you going to do? Get some good value. I don't see what he had. He had 
ace three. So yeah, I got ton of value out of him pre flop one, and then even more so post flop when the when the bets started getting big because he's he's not folding an ace. So I think we missed one value bet so far with kings against tens. And raise for value. No need to slow play, guys, and let them hold them because people are going to be calling. One for raising aces is generally not a very good play. Let me hold them. Ace! Wow, we are like 100 for 100 on those. Debating what we want to do, if we want to bet, or if we want to... We'll go ahead and bet. We'll get a call from weak, from weaker hands here, given, this guy's, given these guys' his limping range. And we're going to go ahead and check. If we had the king of spades here, it would be so much better. I'll probably end up check calling... Know about the river. I don't think he's gonna be turning any hand to a bluff here that he calls on the flop. Is what I'm thinking. Although he is ag aggressive on the river, we're, the pot really isn't all that big in order to make a, a hero call. If it was like ten to one, I would make the call. Wow, what is our where's our time bank at? What the hell? You only get like five seconds to act, huh? But given the four, if the four flush didn't come in, I would definitely check all the river bet there, or probably even bet ourselves. But what is he calling us on that flop? That's gonna turn his hand to a bluff on the river. It doesn't have a spade in it. I, I really don't think up to wide range. I probably could maybe have gone bet bet, but that would. Kind of build the pot some, but we got queens again. Re raise for value. Oh, good, we got a monkey in the pot. That's good. Hey, there's no ace. When you have a king as an ace on the board, it's, it's not really that hard to play limit hold'em because you really can't lose that much more than a couple bets post flop as you can in low limit hold'em. I'm still going to go ahead and bet because. First off, he's short stacked. Secondly, I can value town the 62.15 with a pretty wide range. Yeah. He's short stacked, and if he hits an ace, he hits an ace, but what are you going to do? Yeah. You get a pretty good draw on that flop. He probably should have checked. If I were him, I actually like a check raise or get all my money on the flop. So. I might not have bet it had. Ooh, ace check suited. Keep any top pair against this guy. I'll get three suits of value out of this guy for sure. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fold. I'm bet again. I'm betting. Even if the club comes, I'm gonna be betting that river. Even if the club comes, if he bets, I'll go ahead and call. But This guy here is going to be like our station, so we're going to try and value hunt him every, all the chance that we can get. And the reason why I like to bet that turn is because like he's only got like one and a half big blinds, and so we're going to we're going to be getting that money in the pot anyway. We want to yeah we want to re-raise the jacks preflop. Like I said, most of our value comes in from our preflop play against these guys. Oh, we're four bet. That's not good. But four bet four way. Look at look at we're getting. We're getting like sixteen to one. 17 to 1, though. So even, we can actually set mine pretty well here. What do we want? To, we want a value bet for sure. Everyone in the brother's going to be calling. That's fine. We get tons of value. Most of you guys have over cards. So. I don't think Mr. Jones has nines, but Mr. JL Hanley actually might. Hasn't, might probably does have a nine here. So what we want to do with our nine. Calculate our odds. We can't really do that on this freaking slow table. And we can actually get a free show down here. I actually think he has a nine. Twos. Wow. Okay. We win a nice pot. Didn't expect him to have twos. He actually could set... He could probably set mine on that board. Really well. And I think ace and suit is actually a fold.
it's like if we assume that he has a nine, that means there's only three outs left in our deck, so that we're getting we'll be getting six percent. We need fourteen to one. We're getting like ten to one. Probably weren't getting implied odds to call it with a nine, but there's also the chance that we're ahead. And you have to include that too. Like if you think you're hundred percent behind and you need to hit a hand to catch up, then you can be for certain. But getting ten to one there, I pretty much had to make the call. Because there's a chance that I was ahead too. If he goes ahead and bets that river, I don't know if I could call. I mean, I'd be a, I, actually, I probably would have to call because I'd be getting such a sick price, like ten to one, eleven to one, twelve to one. When you start like calculating those odds, it's like I need to be good here twelve percent of the time, or no, like eight percent of the time for this call to be good. And I read somewhere something about like a guy always has about ten percent chance that he's bluffing, so. Limit hold them. If you're getting like 12 to 1, you should probably almost never fold. Like a pair on the river or something. And I think people like try to make hero folds too much in limit hold them. And it's generally not profitable. It's usually best to just go ahead and and uh, call for the one bet. Because the, the most it could cost you actually at one time is one bet. And as long as you have a decent showdownable hand, then it's not going to be that incorrect. And we can talk about that hand where I had ace queen up here versus the guy who had queens, or was it somewhere here? This is a tough spot too. Do you want a value raise or do you want a call? I think this is gonna be a call. Light position, ace ten offsuit is actually a, is actually a raise. Huh. Go ahead and switch to the loose games. I'm not going to bet that I've got shot here because we're just going to be building a pot. We can call for the gutter though. Actually, no, I was I was kind of correct. There were one, two, three, four, five players. Okay, he's got the nuts here. Come on, three ball. That doesn't help at all. Yeah, his checker's got a smoke. He actually could have the flush draw, though. Is he open one thing threes? I think he actually could have an ace, too. Overcalling with the ace? You guys want to overcall with the ace? You can get ten and a half to one? Alright, I'll do it. I, I didn't really put the three in his range. I really don't care if I like the overcall as much. I would check raise. Well, debate whether or not I would check raise there if I were him with a flush draw. Well, he didn't raise the flush draw earlier, did he? Okay. That said, I should have folded that river, folded that turn. I'm trying to think. Because based on earlier, when he didn't raise the flush draw with the ace king suitor like he should have, you should have like gotten it all in on that on that flop. He's not going to be trying to get for value out of his flush draw that he has there now. So therefore, he's going to be having a set or better there a lot. And so I, I was getting odds to call with my with the chance for the gut shot on the flop. So that's good. The turn when I get when I when my ace gets there, I was thinking. Well, we could have the ace I flush out, so I'm ahead. This guy here, it's tough to put a 20 slash 2. Guy who's like playing 20% of his hands on 3 2 suited pre flop. I really did not think he actually had a 3. He could have had pocket 3s. But even still, I don't even I don't even think my overcall on the river was good. So. Yeah, and we're going to be getting a lot of action on this flop because we have the ace of diamonds. And we have an overpair. If he bets again, we'll probably end up raising again. Because our, our hand is very strong. If he three bets, so we'll definitely slow down. Well, you bet. Build the pot. We have the nuts. We've got
we've got about six outs here. I don't really like the spades. We'll go ahead and bet it for a free card on the river. Our queen might be good now if we hit. Check calls the flop. And then bets the river when the flush hits. We have a straight. We don't have any time at all to think at all in this game, do we? We have like 10 seconds. I don't mind my fold down the river. It was only getting like 4 to 1. Pot wasn't that big. I would have called it if I had a jack or a queen. Probably should have even called the straight, but oh well. Go ahead and open one of the queen jacks seated. Open let me feel so dirty. Trust me. And we hit the queen. Free card it, and we'll go ahead and call any bat in the river. See, who raised us? This guy did, so we'll go ahead and bet. We now have a double gutter to go with this. Should we continue betting? We've got 16 outs to the nuts. I'm going to go ahead and bet again. 16 outs to the nuts. If it's heads up, I'll bet the river unimproved. I improved, though. I would have checked the turn if I didn't hit the open. I'm sorry to go with it. I'm just trying to think of, like... Because the amount of odds I had, like increased massively. And the reason why I say I would bet the river when I missed is because there's always a chance he's going to fold, or he has a worse flush draw, and he'll bet me out of. But we hit a draw! We hit a draw! I don't like his race there with the ace forward all to isolate, because no one's ever folding. So it's not a very good hand. Not a very good situation to do that with, but... What hand did we have? We had the queens against the guy. Should we call getting a gazillion to one? Sure. A trick that you don't want to do is you also don't want to be building flush draws for people that when you don't have the non nut flushes. And we're getting seven to one again. We'll call. We get top pair. We'll go ahead and check call. We could actually bet and force this guy to raise. If it wasn't a paired board, we probably would do that more. Okay, we actually have top pair. We'll go ahead and call. Maybe he could be open limping with. I have no idea. He could be doing this with a lot of hands, though. Now he went and check fold. I haven't really been liking my play so far in this. Although it makes sense because I haven't really played Lemon Hold'em in a long time, so. Overcalling on the river is usually pretty bad with a lot of marginal hands. Especially with a hand like Ace Ten, that's not a very good play. There's a lot. Of, I got a lot of catching up. I got to do it in order to get back into this game. Especially four tabling. I might have made some of my money back though. Nope, still down like 14 bets. Yeah. Uh, off suit connectors. Is there really any value to that? And eh, no. Although I should probably almost, you should probably almost call there with a, a fairly wide range. If there's suit, I would call. If there were maybe like five, four off suit, I would call.
<laughs> well, maybe a7. If it was suited, um, the chart might say to open limp, but who knows. We've lost most of our big pots here with pretty big hands. I would have liked to have saved... I would have liked to have saved two bets with the ace-10 offsuit hand earlier. I... let's see, other hands we lost, like ace-king, river to king, tens against aces, on a 7-4-4 board, and then kings against aces on an ace-high board. So we really have had a hard time getting a lot of value from our hands. Ace-queen suited is going to be a re-raise, 100%. Somebody goes ahead and re raises us, so we'll just go ahead and call. Not four bet without a read. So, we'll call. We have to call one barrel. Just because we're getting seven to one with the two over cards. Now we have a gut shot to go with it. He's either got right now like ace king or kings, or ace king or ace queen, and so we're not really going to be betting him off whatever hand that he has. So, chances are we are either going to be splitting this or ace king. So yeah, he wasn't going to be folding the turn with Ace King. He we, he might have folded if we fold bet at the river though. That's more of a read dependent play than anything. This player limps. I'll go ahead and limp too. If he hadn't folded, I would have raised. These queens are ace magnets. I'm probably just going to go ahead and bet, because he's going to call me with a wide range. So. He'll probably call me with a lot of gut shot type hands there, as well as flush draws and any 10, maybe even like pocket 9s, pocket 8s or something too, so... I'll make that value bet there on the paired aces and the flush jolly board. We've had a lot of big hands. We, we've had aces several times. We've had aces once, ace king suited, ace king tw both twice, ace king, ace queen suited three times. Kings three times and we're negative with kings. So that's you. You know when you're never negative with when you're negative with queens, you're not really going to be a. You can't really have a winning session. We're negative with queens also, so that's two. And limit hold them. You're going to generate most of your profits from your aces, kings, aces and kings, and then some of your queens. Actually, the same is like that, and and no limit hold them too. All the other hands just cancel out the rake and the blinds. Yeah, we are like running like God with our with our big pairs. I should have played four hundred and L. They're King three times and Queen three times, yeah. Bet, 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 bet. If somebody raises us after cold calling I'm gonna keep betting. Keep betting. If somebody raises us here. This guy, it's gonna be a tough spot if he raises us. We'll go ahead and open lump to King Jack suited. And we can go ahead and bet for value again. Prefop razor was here. It's always it's always good to know where the prefop razor was too, because then you can decide on whether or not you want to check raise your draws for value. Big pot. King two. Okay. 
go ahead and double check the King Jack suited open limp under the gun. That's what it says. It says to call. And actually, in a loose game, it says to, it says to raise. But I don't know. I don't really like Ace King's check call. Or I'm sorry. It's a tough spot for Ace King because I don't think this guy is check. He's gonna be check raising anything but the queen there, right? Is he? I don't think so. On the queen queen x board, three way, there's no draws. If he bets, we're gonna go ahead and raise. But otherwise, we're gonna bet. Betting for value. I mean, there's a flush draw out there and a straight draw. And luckily, we can. Do we want to suck this guy in, or do we want to bet? If we want to raise him out, I don't think I want to raise him out right now. If he raises us, it's gonna be annoying. But uh, la, 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 la. I'll go ahead and check. He might bluff a miss flush draw because he and I now, now counterfeited my four, and I no longer I, I now split with a lot of queens. So there's no sense in me value betting. But he might bluff a miss flush draw maybe. He had ace king unimproved. So and if he raises us any point, we're gonna three bet him. We're getting some good value now out of our hands. We are trying to run like God. How are we doing now? I should go ahead and, uh, Quit this video, it's getting kind of long. Only down three bets. Yay! This game's so swimmy. I'm going to go ahead and fold, getting only five to one. I did some calculations a while back on profitability of cards in the blinds. Me and a buddy of mine, I'd hate gnomes from FTR, way back in the day. We did a lot of calculations of what kind of odds you need to get in the, in the blind in order to make a call like that profitable. And, don't, don't quote me on this just yet, you can actually do a search in FTR on the hand that you should be playing in the blinds, considering what odds. And I believe for a suity connector you need like 7 to 1. If you're getting 9 to 1, you can play any two suited and like 11 to 1, 82 cards. I believe. This was like three years ago that I did this calculation, though. And since then, I've. I wouldn't say I've forgotten all my limit hold'em knowledge, but I've pushed it in the back of my mind that I can play it on occasion and do okay with it. Like, if I find myself that I'm not playing, if I'm not playing live, no limit very well, and I'm not having very much fun. Live limit games for me are just a blast. Like live limit Omaha, limit, limit Hold'em. I have the like the most fun playing those games because I actually I usually just like crush competition. It's happened so many times. Like I go out in like Vegas last, not this last time I was out there, but back last in September when I was out there, I sat in like some three six limit game and I made like twenty five bets in like a couple hours. It was kind of fun, only because like. You can really build big pots, and that's where a lot of your money comes from. Is when you are able to build big pots against players that have a, a pretty, a pretty tight range. Say they have aces or something, and you end up flopping a set on them, and you know that that like they have aces only because that's the only the only reason why they would actually have a raise in that spot is because they have aces or something. And like either they're raising on the gun, you're getting like set odds to call or something gross, and then. They end up like bet three betting you on the flop, and you're able to like get them to raise you on the turn, or eh, you're able to get a bet three bet off on the turn. And then, you know when you when you, when you start bet three betting the turn, and you know they're going to, going to guaranteed going to showdown, you, you can really start building that pot. And the more people that you add into it, like say there's like two other players in the pot that both have like flush draws or something, and you know they they statistically are not correct to fold. They should be calling, and they are calling, but they probably don't know that. They just think, like, well, I got a flush draw, and then these guys are going wacko because 
they each got monsters, and it's true, but it's how you build monster pots, and you, know, you take down a couple, you take down a 30-bet pot when you've only invested, like, six big blinds because you've gotten, six bets, I'm sorry, because you've gotten, like, three other people to put in a massive amount of turn bets, mainly by getting, like, a check raise off on the turn or something, like, you check to the guy that had aces, and he bets, and then there's, like, two callers with draws, and you check raise them, and then you're, like, you're just sucking in value, and the ace is going to re-raise, and, like, two other guys cold call with their flush draws, and you four bet, and you're just, like, you know, you start four betting turns, which are four bets each, you, you can build pots pretty quick. And that's what's fun in Lemon Hold'em. And, yeah, yeah, you get sucked out on a lot, but a lot of the times, too, they're going to miss... And you're going to be raking in monster like, this, this huge pot. I think, like, the biggest pot that I ever won at 2-4 was, like, 100 and... Oh, 2-4 online. I think I actually have the record on FTR for the biggest pot one FTR. I'm trying to think. Well, I, this is it's different. Like on, in an uncapped game, you can win a lot more money than you can in a non-capped game. In a non-capped game, I think my biggest pot was like 35 bets at 2-4, which is like 140 bucks. And then at the 3-6 game, I think I won like a 63-bet pot. I think. I think, I think, I think. Because there was a, there was a, uh, a side bet, me and Hyper Mega Cheek, FTR had going on who could get like the biggest pot and I had like a 60 some odd bet pot I think I beat him by like two bets or something he continued to get close but he could never actually get it I think and I was able to get that because of on it might have been 3-6 it might have been like 1-2 actually it might be 1-2 and it was because of an uncapped heads up on the river at, at the Cryptologic Games way back in the day so if it's, like, heads up and you have, like, you know, straight flush over quads or something, then you can really just hammer them. So, and if and if you have, like, straight flush over quads and you've got, like, tur the turn and the river, you can get massive bets in. So, this is just me reminiscing of my old Lemon Hold'em days. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, HUD stats up. I felt like I was a little spewy this video. Somewhat, a couple of loose call downs, and I hope I went over them pretty well. Keep in mind, I haven't played Lemon Hold'em in, 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 well, online in a while, but hopefully, I've shown you a little bit of the basics so that you can go on and be Lemon Hold'em for yourself. Back when I was a Lemon Hold'em player, all I would eat, breathe, like die Lemon Hold'em. Like I would think of just constant, constant ways of scenarios and situations of, of how to get the most value uh, against what type of players. And, you know, yeah, the situation might come up, like, once every, like, 10,000 hands, but, you know, and you think about, like, a good scenario, and they come up, and you can give them good, of good variations, and that's all I would do. And I haven't really found myself doing that so much so far yet with the No Limit. As much as I used to do in the Lemon Hold'em. I used to love Lemon Hold'em a lot. But anyway, okay, here we go. Some stats. 300 hand, 302 hands, 14, 10. I like those numbers. I believe that those are actually good long term winning numbers. My win to showdown is actually historically pretty high. I'm. Um, not one for really holding too much, but I've actually won 60%, so, like, this is a pretty sick ratio. I actually, I could have saved a couple bets, and I'm not going to uh, deny that aspect at all. Now we can go ahead and go through some of our big hands. Winnings, daily hands, we'll go ahead and, uh, go through some of this here. I'm trying to get this window to, to open up some. Alright, so we have the Jack's hand. Where we re-raise another gun razor and we get four bet. 
And then once the four better checks, though, he's going to be check raising us actually with probably queens are better. Uh, it's 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 a pretty good check raise to do that with queens, because you get the other guys like you know bad odds to draw. And in some cases, you want to take the pot down and it's get a heads up. But but once everybody checks and he doesn't raise me, then I can just go to value town on everybody. Granted, the seven came in and I was a little scared, but I had I had my own gut shot draw, and I don't know if he's got two pair or he's got anything. I mean, he called a raise, a re-raise, and a four bet cold after lumping it under the gun. So he could have a very, very wide range. And he's probably a pretty bad player. So I like my call there. And I didn't get a value bet on the river. That's a pretty thin value bet. I don't know what he would be doing. And he might be afraid of the flush, which is cool. Gives you the free showdown. I, I, ran, I got aces a couple times here. I thought a lot of those were just standard value bets going to value town against the players. Putting in all three streets. I like the other play with the aces more so when I raised them on all three streets. He bets, I raise. He bets again, I raise. I'm not afraid. Like if, as soon as he like bets three bets me, I'll start slowing down. But I mean, I've got such a monster hand. If he has King Jack here, I've still got like a monster odds. I got like any seven, any eight, any ace, any any flush draw to suck out on him. And so like, there's a good chance that I'm, that I'm ahead here more often than not. So, and I don't like the way he played it with King Queen. Well, I don't like his river check call with the king queen. I don't know what the hell he beats on the river with the king queen in there. But finding spots where you can save that one bet, and, and obvious spots where you're behind, is actually a good way to to increase because every time you save that one bet, is that you add that to your win rate. Just instead of like you know, value betting one bet, like saving one bet, is just like is like the exact same thing. So. I'm trying to find. Can we go over some spots that I lost and go over them? The ace king hand here, I am a little bit up in the air on still. I mean, I have four bet pre flop, which is a pretty much standard play against an unknown for me with ace king. And he raises me on the flop, and he could be doing this with a pretty wide range. He could be doing this with ace king himself. He could be doing this with a flush draw, like ace queen suited ace king. And right now it is like two bets, two four bets, five six bets, and I was getting seven to one on the turn to call with my two other cards and a gut shot, which the queen I'd rather have the ten in this scenario than the queen because the queen helps out queens a lot and he's not really likely to have tens and raise me on this flop so. I only had the gut shot, but even with the gut shot, I was getting seven to one with whatever implied odds. Like if I had the gut shot on that ten and I lead, and I lead, he, he might raise me again. Or I could probably get a check raise off on the river, so I would have implied odds of two. I would I would take two bets to call the return, so getting like nine odd, nine to one odds total, and with four outs times two, I'm looking at like eight percent, which is like twelve to one. Yeah, it's probably a, a pretty thin call. I don't, I don't know if I care for the turn. It would have saved me like three bets there overall. Kings. I run kings and aces on the ace side board. It probably ended up saving me some money. I usually never fold kings post flop heads up. Ever. Even on like an ace side board, there's always a chance they could have queens or jacks or something. I think they're like if he has queens here, and he's, or he could have kings too, and you think he's like value hunting because I'd raise him with a good ace, but. Tens. I'm a little iffy. I don't know if I played that good or not against a random four bets, four bet range when he bets all three streets. I think once he bets the flush, when flush comes in on the river and he bets, I could probably fold it pretty easily. He did a good job in value betting that river on me when the flush hit. He wasn't afraid of it at all. I probably should have folded the river, but. I didn't. So I'm looking at like scenarios where I probably should have I could have saved some bets here. Queens. My turn bet here 
was pretty much for protection. The Jose Anito guy was pretty bad. And the KC Square guy actually should have gotten a Zalz. Like, right here, this is Ace King suited, two overcards and a flush draw. I actually like him check raising on this flop. Check, because he's going to get the Donk in there too. And I, would, and I would actually three bet him, so we, we had to give him a chance to get all his money in on that flop, for sure. But that said, he's only got a bet and a, high, bet and a half left on the turn, and I don't want to give Jose a free card for the flush draw. That's what he does have. And I'll get value from Jose if he has, like, Queen Jack or something, so. And it's unfortunate that he actually did hit his ace. But he actually got a lot of odds on me. And I don't, I don't hate the way I play that at all. You have ace-10. We'll go over this one a couple more hands. Debating, you know, you got to debate on whether or not I should raise here. If I was following the tight chart, I should raise. If I was following the loose chart, I would call. I don't think I don't think folding is actually the best. But if I had a sense to actually like a raise more than a call, got to call with a gut shot. And once the guy check raises me, I still have to call with the odds. But once the ace hits and I'm betting a call, I should not be in there. I'm like, this is like three dollars to two dollars here, where I'm just like giving away money. I have like no chance of winning this pot. In my opinion, once you got check raises and then bets the turn, he's got a like. I think he's got a pretty big hand. And QSC did a pretty good job. I don't know if he was planning on it and trying to induce an overcaller. Like if I had three two, I'm debating whether or not like if it was a good play or not to raise the river because well actually raising the river would be would be equal EV for him because he gets the same amount of money in the pot. Uh, but he raised me out. But I should have at least folded the river. Folding the turn would have been the next best thing. So I probably could have saved at least like five or seven bets here, and I'd be up money. All right, we have ace queen suited. The re-raise here is pretty standard, given the fact that he just he just like four bet us like the hand before. Um, the the flop call we have to call like pretty much any two cards because we're getting like. You know, one, two, or four, eight, you know, like nine to one to call with like two overcards, which is a really good price. We turn a flush draw, which is the same way. We could actually raise this turn as a semi bluff, and we might get Ace King to fold. And I actually don't mind that play at all. It's actually a pretty, it's a play that would be up in high limits game if you're playing against solid opponents, because your opponent isn't going to be four betting you here with. I'm sorry, this is going to be 3-betting you with, like, out a 7 or maybe even a set. I have I, I wouldn't think he'd 3-bet me on this turn with the, with, the, with the aces or anything. He'd definitely call, and he'd probably just check the river to me, too. And then i go ahead and take the free showdown. And I, the thing is, like, if the flush comes in on the river, there's a chance that he wouldn't actually get a bet out there. So and if he has a hand like jacks, you know, I have two overcards and whatnot. So I actually don't mind a turn raise, but as played, I think that was okay too. Although it, 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 turn raise there wouldn't be that bad. The nines. This will be the last time we go over here. We only we lost three bets on it. I like my re-raise pre-flop here. Gets to cut off open. He's doing it pretty wide. He's, he has to call like 100 percent of his range. And when your opponent has to call 100 percent of his range because of limit, then your value of your hand goes up pretty wide and. I bet, and I'm. Duh, I like the river call. I don't even know if I like the river call. I don't know. It. This is. I mean, I induced the bluff on the river, and I was getting like three, four to one, five. Well, I bet the river myself, didn't I? Value on myself. Um, going for thin value, like, I think uh, it's kind of funny, because when I miss the value with the queens and the ace high board, I try get, making it up here with the uh, nines on the king eight board, so it just didn't work out for me, and that's fine. I think there's a chance he does call me with a weak eight, because my hand looks like a missed ace queen or something, so. Alright. Well, guys, hopefully this has been entertaining and educational for you guys, and if you guys like it, I'll go ahead and make uh, more videos in the future. Hopefully, I'll end up uh, running better and maybe even playing better, too. But that said, this has been Code Red Rules for GrindersRule.com, and good luck at the tables.